this. Oh, oh my, oh. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, true all ages, welcome to a brand new episode of SE Alliance. This is yours truly, the JM Factor. Joseph Mott is here to bring you with more SEA action as we are continuing with these scary heavy qualifying matches. We are damn well close to one of the biggest CBVs in the history of SEA, Revelation. And not just Revelation, no, no, it's Revelation 5. And we're beginning with our first qualifying match as Mila. We'll be taking on taking on Tenny in, in our in our fourth of the six qualifying matches. Mila, who's been having a lot of issues trying to get wins in SEA as, as for the past couple of months, and not only that, but she was approached by Melissa Forrester last Rebellion. Melissa Forrester was trying to get uh, Mila to join her cause, basically even getting going as far as saying. Like where have you where have you been? Like where's your career been going? You've been going all the way down to rock bottom pretty much. Lose loss after loss after loss. And, you know, Mila told her the you know piss off. You know I think you know those words that Melissa said it really didn't get anywhere. And Mila, but Mila's gonna have to keep a clear head. She wants to go against him. You don't want to be a, you don't, you can't afford to be distracted when facing, uh, uh, facing somebody from the Tower of Sin, specifically Tenny. Tenny, whose game, whose deadliest move in her arsenal is that pile driver, the Maria's Blessing. As she drunk and spit out the, the blood of Dark Sakura, to the demon and to the fans, contending them with Dark Sakura's evil, adding more to her church and evil. Alright, here we go. Can Mila keep a clear head? Because she's really, she's been distracted all, even before the show even started. She's been like so distracted, she's been like staring off into space. And now, but she looks like she's got, she's got Tenny in an ankle lock. She even great behind the ankle. See Tenny holding on to her uh, knee a little bit. Mila trying to take bases open. You don't want to give Tenny too many opportunities. A single blow from Tenny, a single slam or drop, anything, and it will not be a good look for you. And so far, Mila is keeping that in mind. Now setting T, Lenati and Tenny up for the ride, and Tenny with the DDT. As Tenny was being launched in the air, she literally threw out, rolled out the DDT. There was a kick. There's an axe handle and a clothesline in the back of the head. And now let's see, let's, what's this, what is Tenny going to bring to the table? Big jumping clothesline. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys come and catch Revelation 5 when we get to it. Um, Revelation 5 is going to be big. It's going to be a two-day, two-CPV. That's how big the card is going to be. All championships, well, all titles except... Well, pretty much all titles will the, will be on the line practically. I mean, you are, as you already know, you know, Saya will be defending her Queen of Roses title against Aya. Black Belt Demon, the new Rosa Roses champion, will be defending it against Mandy and Sakura, who we have we don't we're not sure what her condition is, but she will be defending her women's championship against Rio. Those are the first three confirmed matches so far, as well as Stairway to Heaven, once we have all the qualifiers all set up. And Mila driving the knee into the midsection of Tenny. And another knee. Followed by the move that bends, that destroys logic in the universe, the Russian leg sweep. Mila should be staying on Tenny. This could be a mistake. She gave Tenny a little bit too much time to recover. And there's a kick to the midsection. Tenny with a punch. Now she's setting her up for a ride and drives both her fists right into the face of Mila. Tenny going for the cover. One, only got a one. But she's staying on the attack. Look at these, look at these strikes from Tenny. Those holy strikes as she would like to call them. And immediately going right into a pin. There's a cover, only, only a one again. Tenny with a shoulder to the midsection. And now delivering even more shoulders. Followed by a clubbing blow to the back. 
and I'm just grabbing that knee and smashing it into the canvas. Tangy's like, praise her. Praise Dark Soccer, our savior. Well, I don't know if I'll be doing all that now. There's a blow to the back of the head. Tangy now throwing Mila into the other corner. And now delivering even more shoulder thrusts. And another clubbing blow to the back. And now putting, driving her knee into the back and now going for that camel clutch. Doing damage to that neck and the lower back. Mila in trouble. And just slams her face into the canvas doing her damage. And oh wait, look at this! Corbin that twisting reverse STO. Oh, I think it could be Maria's blessing time. No, there was an E. Overhead release, belly to belly suplex. Mila is still in this fight. Quickly going for that rear naked choke. Just trying to do whatever she can to, the, 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 to wear her down. Leave her open for that guillotine. Doing even more damage to that sternum. Just applying pressure to it. Now where's she taking her? She's taking Tenny for a ride to the corner. Now she's bringing her to the top rope. Time for a back superplex from the deadly second rope. The deadliest rope of them all. Oh wait, and there it is. She's got the anaconda device. She's got the anaconda device locked in. Tenny in trouble. Tenny is screaming in agony. I think while screaming in agony, she's probably saying a prayer. And my God, her prayer saved her. But that doesn't matter. This is a guillotine. This will get that. that, that, that Mila could get it. Mila could get the win here. Mila could qualify. And oh, oh my God, no, she didn't. Tenny broke out of the hole. I think she is she going to try to guillotine again? No. Tenny punches her right in the back. And oh, oh no. She's got her by, by her shorts. Maria's blessing, my God. There, look at him. Just spiking her head into the canvas. And I'm going for the, and I'm just dragging her away from the ropes. Doesn't want a rope break. Quickly going for the pin. One, two, oh, forget about it. It is over. The referee could have counted this 20. And Mila wouldn't have gotten up. Mila's losing streak continues. Mila put up a vast effort here. She tried to go for that second, uh, you know, guillotine show. Unfortunately, Tenny was well aware of it and was able to block it. She was able to block it, give her a shot in the back, grab the holder by her shorts, by the, by the edge of her shorts, and drop her head first into the canvas with that Maria's blessing. And Maria's blessing is a deadly pile driver. And Tenny is the fourth of six to qualify for the stairway to heaven with two spots left. And Tenny's probably like, praise Dark Soccer. She's yelling it out to the crowd. Praise her. Praise her. She will save us. Lightning! Oh wait! A oh God! She nearly got killed. Meanwhile, in the locker room area, Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for our fifth out of six qualifying matches for Stairway to Heaven. And here comes one half of the Valkyries, Taiga, who just a few moments ago saw what, what, what was was you know look was was looking through the locker DVD's locker room, seeing Mandy 
you know, getting a handshake for BBD, pretty much congratulating her for the finally winning uh, Rosewood's championship, and pretty much, you know, there are no words were spoken, it was you know, straight eye contact, pretty much stating in their eyes, I, could, I believe the message was, but, you know, enjoy the moment while you can, because I'll be taking that bell from you. But if Tyga does qualify for Snowy to Heaven, it, there might be a chance that she might have a moment like that. Tyga, who has been in multiple Stairway to Heaven matches, but has never made it to the final two. I mean, Tyga might have her hands full, because here comes the Master of the Lariat. The woman with the most deadliest lariats in the history of SEA. One half of world's ruin, Mokaku. Mokaku looking the lariat somebody to death. And I guarantee you that after what happened in the hardcore havoc with the Juke, after, you know, the, uh, them losing to the Juke Head Club, pretty much being embarrassed by the Juke, by because of the Juke Head Club's victory, Mokaku is earth as she's looking to drive that, 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 that lariat into somebody. And unfortunately, Taiga might be that victim. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, like the, the stairway that in qualifier comes only once a season. It's a big opportunity for six individuals. Usually in August, there will be the SCA Climax, but unfortunately, um, there will be no SCA Climax this season. And what the... Mokaku randomly climbing up the top rope. And Taiga not having any of it. What was Mokaku trying to think she was Supergirl? Gonna try to go for like a super clothesline from the top rope. And Taiga had to put her back and bring her back to reality. Overhead release belly to belly. Mokaku using her weight to her advantage here. Using her powerful frame. Right now, Mukaku having her way with the Taiga. Elbow right to the face. I wonder what's going through Taiga's mind right now. You know, Taiga, whose tag team partner was third place in the Dawn of Destiny Battle Royal, getting a Rose Rose Championship match. Taiga was in that match, but she got eliminated pretty early on. There's a running super kick by Taiga. Taiga, one of those entertaining wrestlers, and also the one with the greatest name ever. And yeah, what was the deal of Sergeant Clint is trying to run lightning over with her car? Putting a bond, like you're like, you're gonna pay what you owe. I'm like, ugh, I don't know what lightning has to pay. But I have a feeling she's not gonna pay. And as Mokaku now driving those shoulders and just clubbing blow to the back of Taiga. He's grabbing her arm and slamming it down to the canvas. Right now, Taiga having a little bit of difficulty here with Mokaku, and now Mokaku is Irish whooping her to the corner. There's a knife edge. Wait, Taiga turning the tee, the tide, and goes with a lariat. I'm pretty sure Mokaku's probably not pleased with the fact that a hit was done by anybody except her. There's an elbow. One, two, no, only a two. Nowhere near the three. Uh oh, I don't know what she was trying to go for, but she got caught into a power bomb. Mokaku in the zone. Stomp to the belly. Now he's picking Taiga up. Got her up. And with that stunner backpack you know, combination, now he's slamming the back of her head into the canvas. Mokaku not showing any mercy. Taiga having some difficulties. And now she's got Taiga by the back of her shirt. Bring her to the corner. Bring her to the middle of this to the middle ropes. He yanks her down. And drives that knee. Definitely trying to make her respect the knee with that one. Quickly going for a pin. One, two, no. 
Robocopter still staying in control here. No wait, Tyga with another super kick. Now connecting with that knee smash. And now going with some punches. Look at this now, Tyga putting Mokaku on the top rope. Oh, this is not going to be a good look. Oh, wait a minute. Got her. Oh, look at that. Rolling Samoan drop and quickly going up the top rope. Going over that elbow and the leg hook. One, two, no. Still was not enough. And now Bokaku, once again driving those shoulders into the midsection. Bokaku being smart here, there's another knee right to the face. And once again going for another knee smash. Now just picking her up. And oh my god! Vicious Leviathan! Oh wait, she's not done yet. She's setting up for the big one. Tiger dazed. This is not gonna look good. Leviathan! Vicious Lariat, one, two, Taiga is not qualifying, Mokaku is. Mokaku is just denied Taiga of Stairway to Heaven. Look at this, look at this. Rolling Samoan drop off the top rope. Picking Taiga up and nearly kicking her chest in with that Lariat. And nearly taking her head off. With the, with the even more OD Lariat. And after that, now that was it. It was over. It was over when the first Lariat connected. The other one was overkill. Yes, Bukaku was pretty dead set on wanting to make sure that Taiga was down and that she stood down. This victory strengthens the soul of Bukaku. And she is the fifth person to qualify for the Stairway to Heaven. And now we have our sixth born, which is our next match. Qualifying match of Stairwood Evan V13 versus an unknown opponent. He's one of the unknown opponent is. V13, the former Queen of Hardcore champion, lost to Yamo Yamamoto a couple of months ago. Well, it's getting back to last season's revelation. Cyborg looking to qualify and do some serious damage. And think about all the combustible elements we have in the Stairway to Heaven uh, match for this, this year. For this season this year. We got Jury Sonata, Dark Star Chaos. We got Inca. Now we got Tenny and Mokaku in there. <laughs> yeah, a lot of powder tanks in this match. Just waiting to explode. I know V13, somebody's been bugging V13 about what happened with Tag Team Harder. The Becky Nightfall's been missing since last rebellion. I wonder what happened to her. Where could she be? I mean, we know who was responsible for those kidnappings from last rebellion. This is one of those unspoken issues. What? 
Sapphire! Oh no! The older twin sister of Envy! Sapphire had returned to SEA! Sapphire who hasn't been seen since last season from her final confrontation with Envy! So you mean to tell me Sapphire is trying to qualify for Stairway to Heaven? What for? What is her reason? Somebody's career is guaranteed to end when Sapphire is in the ring with somebody. She's in there with V13. We've seen that claw destroy multiple people. What can it do to a machine? And look at that, the single spotlight. The spotlight must always be on Sapphire. Sapphire, who lost the women's championship to Sakura Hajimura. And look at this. She's already, not, not even five minutes, she's already keeping her, her glove in that substance. Keep the new very room on punch. It got parried. Another counter. Look at she's eating her hand in that fluid. I don't know what that fluid is. We know that it destroys lives. Oh god, what a chop. I got a feeling this is not just gonna be a match, this is gonna be a massacre. And there's another chop. These powerful strikes. Look at that! Flew in one full motion. Already bowing. Oh, she tried V13 trying to go for something, he got blocked. Sapphire disgustingly using her mother's techniques. The, the late the late great aquamarine's techniques. Which rightfully belonged to Envy, since Envy, you know, when she beat Sapphire, she pretty much became Aquamarine's successor, her true heir. And oh good god! One, two, no. Look at this, Sapphire just trolling E13 with smacks. Now bring your corner out using that metal, meta that metallic mask as a weapon in those head with those headbutts. And a boot right to the face. Sapphire is having her way with V13. And look at that V13 finally getting a move in. Quickly going up the top rope. And oh, this is not good. Sapphire caught her in midair. There's a backbreaker. Swing neck breaker now just wait no the springboard off the off the ropes. Sapphire doing some serious damage and look at just throwing V13 like she's nothing outside the ring. And oh god! Vaulting body breast to the outside. V13 has only got only one move. Ladies and think about it, these things can only got one. Oh my god, through the table! Thank god I'm in my skybox. She has got vertical suplex right through the table. Oh, this is gonna make things worse. She's got her up. Crucifix power bomb on the on the on the remnants of that table. Now just throwing her into chairs, throwing her into barricades. The referee has it till the count of 20. They got all the time in the world to get back in the ring. V13, I can't believe he's only got one move. Only one move off her. Oh, wait. Oh, my God. No. No, please. No. No. Jesus. Oh, my God. She just booted V13 into the steel post. I mean, what point is Sapphire trying to prove here? Referee is a 12. Referee is a 13. And Sapphire getting in the ring to quickly break up the count. Now she's throwing V13 in the barricade in oh no. Oh, come on, man. Come on, brah. Spear through the barricade! 
complete and utter destruction. I've never seen a thorough ass whooping like this. Not in so long. Like Sapphire is enjoying every minute of this, every second of this. Oh god, and she's gonna do it again on the post? No, she's correct. Just slams her head face first. Now bringing her back in the ring. And look at she's already kicking her hand again and more of that that whatever the hell that is. There's a shot to the throat. She's spinning even more of it. Oh my god. Just destroying the face of D13 with that iron claw STO. And forget about it. It is over. This was like only like D13's only move only did only like 10% damage. Sapphire's, all of Sapphire's moves that she did in this match were all super effective, all critical hits. It's like a level 12 taking on a level 99 super boss. Yeah, this match was over way earlier. Sapphire just went to overkill like she normally does, where she tries to intentionally hurt and injure her opponents. We just saw what Sapphire could do to a machine. What could she do to five other people who are over? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are running out of time. Yours truly, the J Factor Joe Spot, is saying good fight, good night, and I'll see you guys on Rebellion episode 25. Now that we have the stairway to heaven set, what will happen with the rest of the card?